Do you stream on a Roku, a Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. Watch Action News Live. And the big story on Action News. Plus special programming, breaking news, and severe weather updates. Tremendous amounts of rain. Always on. Always the news team you trust. Watch 6ABC 24-7 on your streaming device. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. And welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the Labor and Energy Show with Jay Doc and Krause. We thank everybody for tuning in, as we always do. Jay Doc, welcome in uh, to you. It's another busy week as we roll through the month of July. We welcome our new listeners and viewers from the western part of the state, from out in western Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, uh, all the way down into the Harrisburg area, and then, of course, uh, all of our listeners who have been with us in the Philadelphia area, the Jersey area, Delaware, Maryland, and all the way down uh, into Washington, D.C. This is the Labor and Energy Show. J. Doc, good show lined up for uh, our viewers and our listeners today. Talk about our two special guests and then let you and I run through a couple of the topics that you'll cover and then we'll get underway. So, Joe, uh, today's show is the epitome of a Labor and Energy Show. Our guests our Dave Callahan, President Marcella Shell Coalition, okay, who represents the, uh, a large portion of the energy sector here in Pennsylvania, uh, okay, and of course Rob Bear, who's the president of the Pennsylvania State Building Trades, uh, and and uh, you know there's so much to talk about. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have our labor and energy update uh, from Rob Bear. We're going to talk about setbacks, liquefied natural gas, LNG. Uh, and uh, something they call the MVP, the Mountain Valley Pipeline. A lot of these topics might sound foreign to regular folks like me and you, but um, they have so much to do with our everyday lives. And like you and I always say, Joe, we want to educate the public on what's going on uh, so they understand and can be informed and make the proper decisions. Yeah, no doubt about that. And I do want to remind uh, everyone that if you miss any of the broadcast today or you want to re-listen to one of the uh, previous episodes of the Labor and Energy Show with J. Doc and Krause, you can uh, go to Apple or Spotify, just search the Labor and Energy Show and easily download uh, the podcast or the edition or the issue that you would like to see. For example, last, last week's program, J Doc, um, uh, great program and a great and a great listen. I re-listened to the uh, podcast of last week's show with your special guest, and it was a very good program. Well, you know, Joe, here's the thing. Um, you know, we're having we have the who's who on from uh, you know from from not only the East Coast but across the country, and uh, when it comes to labor and energy. And this is, has a lot to do. You and I do the, the weekly uh, labor show in, in the Philadelphia region, but um, this, 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 is, you know, adds the labor at, at the energy component to what we're doing. And these are our natural resources. These are what we, uh, you know, when you talk about energy, you talk about how we heat our houses. Okay. How we drive our automobiles, uh, every part of what we do, um, you know, is, 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 is affects us that that affects us uh, has to do with our energy sector and there's so many different components we're ecstatic to have the who's who from around the country on our broadcast let's get started on this week's edition of the labor and energy show with jay doc and krause on the other side of our first commercial break david callahan rob bear will join jay doc and we'll get into today's conversation this is the labor and energy show with jay doc and krause back in a moment is the best vacation one that you find or one you get lost in? One that takes you to new heights or reminds you to go with the flow, to get your feet wet and your wheels spinning. One that lets you find your own rhythm or get carried away. Find the best of yourself. Get lost in the woods. Plan your stay in the wild woods today. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. 
Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. Do you stream on a Roku, a Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. Watch Action News Live. And the big story on Action News. Plus special programming, breaking news, and severe weather updates. Tremendous amounts of rain. Always on. Always the news team you trust. Watch 6ABC 24-7 on your streaming device. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. I welcome back everyone to the Labor and Energy Show here on the Jacobedia Network. Uh, we've got a fantastic show. We've already introduced our guests. Uh, so we're going to dig right into it because we have lots of lots to talk about. Rob Bear, Dave Callahan, welcome to the broadcast. Great to have you on. Um, going to start off with, with Rob. Rob, a couple of weeks ago, you were on the program uh, with our launch on, on the KDKA. And, and again, shout out to our our listeners uh, in the western part of Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia. Um, we talked about a number of things. I'd like to just kind of touch on a few of them. Uh, we're going to be talking about setbacks, okay? We're going to be talking about LNG and and something called the MVP, okay? And so having said that, Rob, if, if you would, okay, a couple of weeks ago we talked, and I like, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, what, what our labor – community is doing, our leadership is doing in, in Pennsylvania uh, on a lot of our, our, our important energy uh, issues. And a lot of people don't know or, or, or put two and two together that a big part of our labor sector uh, works heavily in, 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 in the energy sector. And so having said that, let's talk about a, a, a little bit about um, an update on Reggie. I know you've been working with the governor on solutions um, you know, it, you know, and I think the way you put it, not Reggie, but something else, um, if you would. So the governor is uh, very committed to labor, energy, and the environment. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have some very good conversations with him and some of the other people involved on both sides of the issue, including the environmentalists. Uh, you know, we're still waiting on the Supreme Court decision and the Commonwealth Court decision. Everybody understands that we all have a vested interest in the environment. That can never be denied. But we also have a vested interest in building Pennsylvania up to be an economic development engine for the East Coast. We have all our natural resources here, which we're blessed. We are the second largest producer of electricity in the country. We're the number one exporter of electricity here in Pennsylvania, in the country. Uh, you know, the natural gas is a huge, huge part of our energy sector moving forward. And we have a lot of things in the pipeline to be working on. You know, we are slowly transitioning from coal. Natural gas is way, way cleaner. We all agree on that. Uh, do we need to have some more emission controls in the future, you know, carbon capture, carbon sequestration. Those are all things we're looking at. But we also all need to be aware that to keep Pennsylvania at the forefront, we have to utilize Dave's members, the Marcellus Shale, and the gas that we have. And we need to start looking at using our energy on a macro level, not just here in Pennsylvania. You know, if we can build that LNG plant in Chester, if we can have our drillers have a new market out in, say, Eastern Europe, and we can help Europe convert their dirty coal to clean natural gas, now all of a sudden our energy policy and our labor policy isn't just shaping Pennsylvania. We're helping cleaning up the world. And it's a long-term plan and a long-term process. But if we actually do it, as I said before, crawl, walk, run, we can chart an energy course and a labor policy, not just for PA, but we could use this as a model all over the country. And, you know? and, and, and I'll bring Dave in a second. But what, what people, I mean, they can't know is that natural gas is really the reason the U.S. has reduced greenhouse gas emissions uh, hugely to the 1990s levels. Dave, would you jump in there? Yeah, thank you. Uh, natural gas has played a significant role in cutting our CO2 emissions, in particular from the power generation sector, 
or I think we've dropped uh, emissions by upwards of 44% going back to 2005 or so. Um, and more can be done in the future. Rob did a great job of explaining how, not just how we can continue to make these strides economically and environmentally here in Pennsylvania and Appalachia for your Western listeners and regional listeners, but globally as well. The energy needs a reliable source of clean power, and we've got it under our feet here in Pennsylvania. The Marcellus and Utica underlay roughly two thirds of the Commonwealth. Not all that's developable, but you know, it's a great resource that will be available for generations. And I'm not suggesting that it's going to be used in the same manner tomorrow as it's used today. Maybe there's opportunities with hydrogen, ammonia, maybe there's geothermal opportunity for companies who know how to drill wells. It's about the leveraging what we have available to us right now. Great energy resource, and I'm gonna say it, great construction trade labor, great union labor that go together hand in hand to support communities, support families, and make improvements to the environment at the same time. And, and you know, we're, we're, you know, you said it, uh, and we've, you've both said it many times, but I, I, you know, like the, the conversation uh, uh, with the governor, we, you know, labor, energy, and the environment, we all have a, a obvious vested interest. One of the things that Rob said, and we're going to get into the conversation about uh, setbacks, but one of the things Rob talked about a while ago or on the last show was capping the abandoned wells, okay, getting money from the federal government uh, to combat uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions in that way, which is a huge situation, okay? Touch on that, would you, Rob? So we have thousands of abandoned wells across Pennsylvania, predominantly mostly in western PA, Methane is way worse for the environment than CO2. That can't be denied. And we need to start capping those wells, okay? One of the things that people like to key on is, you know, especially people like to beat up on our drillers. When we're drilling, yes, we have some methane leakage. But I can tell you this, Dave's members have done a fabulous job over the last eight years of, of capturing methane emissions at the wellheads. So we're really talking about 8,000 abandoned wells that we know of. There's possibly another 20 plus thousand out there. You know, so in conjunction with using clean burning natural gas to lower our CO2 emissions in the short term, when I say short term, I'm talking 10 years. And then we combine that with capping these wells. OK, now all of a sudden we are making a huge difference in cleaning up the environment. And it's not like these are incredibly heavy lifts. You know, it's just do we put the money, the time and the engineering into doing it and doing it properly. And while we're doing it, we're continuing to build out another industry, you know? So you start capping 8,000 wells, that's a lot of work. That is a lot of work. And as you survey those wells, some of those wells, as Dave said, could be used for geothermal. Now people think geothermal when they think about a home heating system, but some of these wells, when you get down 15, 18, 2,000 feet, the heat that's in those wells, you're putting glycol in them, you can generate steam from the heat in the earth to turn a turbine. And you can combine wells together if you have a group of them in an area that are that deep. So you can not just help the environment by capping wells, but some of them we can reutilize and continue to create clean, true, clean energy for electricity production. You know, and these are things that 10 years ago we weren't even thinking about. So this industry is advancing daily. You heard Dave say, you know, what we do with natural gas today might not be what we do with it tomorrow. But if we're not going to take a step back and say, we have to take what we have today, we have to use it, use it efficiently, use it effectively, keep generating power, keep Pennsylvania number one, keep people working. And as we move forward, you know, the old saying, we're always reserved the right to modify the plan at any time. Right. So... Right as that new technology becomes available and we cap more wells, we capture our methane. And here's the other thing, too. We can use that methane. You know, there's another byproduct of that. So you're helping the environment, creating a new industry, creating another source of energy. And at the same time, we're continuing to export our gas. And look, there, it's no secret. I love natural gas. Okay, I am a gas guy, have been from day one. It's clean, it's efficient, it's abundant. We're just not ever, 
thinking macro yet. You know, I love my drillers. And I tell everybody, I've had this discussion many, many times. Look, anytime there's a fledgling industry, we go back 2007, 2008, and we started fracking. Did we have some issues? Yes, we did. We don't deny it. Did we clean it up? Yes. And Dave will tell you what we did in 2012 was implement some of the toughest regulations in the country here in Pennsylvania on our drillers. We totally redid our drilling standards. We did our environmental standards. We redid our permitting standards. And we together have cleaned up this industry that Pennsylvania's fracking and drilling should be a shining example of what we want in Pennsylvania and the world. Yeah. I'd like to amplify a couple of things that Rob really said well, and that is in terms of methane emissions from the modern natural gas industry. The industry in this basin, meaning PA, Ohio, West Virginia, has the lowest methane intensity among all other producing basins in the region. Now, what does that mean? That's the amount of methane that's released that escapes as a percentage of the uh, amount of methane produced. We are the leaders in America, among the leaders, if not the leader in the world as well. One other thing about the wells that, that Rob's talking about uh, plugging, a lot of those, all of those are legacy issues from hundreds of years ago when there were no regulations on the books. We're proud of the fact that we're operating under some of the most stringent regulations in, in the entire nation and we're still leading the pack. We're still operating efficiently. Yep. We're still providing the power and the energy that's needed, both regionally and globally. Well said. Uh, let's do this, okay? Um, let's segue into a couple of the other, you know, a couple of the other issues we're going to talk about. Let's talk about setbacks, okay? And uh, our listeners, like I said, you know, when I when I was talking at the beginning when we were introducing the topics with Joe Krause. These issues may not sound familiar to people, but they certainly are impacting their lives and have the potential to impact their uh, lives on an everyday basis. So our job is to educate people. Uh, and there's an issue uh, called setbacks at distances between uh, wells and, you know, it, I guess, structures um, that is very important. Dave Callahan, uh, would you uh, would you introduce it, please? Sure, I'll, I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. Yeah, setbacks are uh, legally mandated distance between wells and either natural features or man-made features, whether it's a stream, whether it's a building or anything else. Those setbacks were increased significantly back in 2012 when the laws were updated for the unconventional modern natural gas industry. There's been legislation introduced the past couple of years, including this year, that would take you know a majority of those setback distances and e increase them up to fivefold. So, for example, uh, from a building from 500 feet up to 2,500 feet. For certain buildings, upwards of 5,000 feet. We've done the research that shows that in certain parts of, of the Commonwealth and in, in all the producing counties, it will have a devastating impact. For your listeners in Western PA, right now, Washington County. 43% of the surface area is off limits for uh, developing a well um, and, and, and hosting a well pad. Under the increased setbacks, that goes up to 99%. In the northeast part of the state, uh, the leading uh, producing county, Susquehanna, um, I believe right now it's roughly 30% of surface area is off limits due to current setbacks. That would balloon up to 96% under these proposals. These proposals are nothing more than thinly veiled attempts to ban the industry. Um, if I could just finish with one thing be before, apart from uh, discussing you know, what they are, the proposals that are out there, this was an issue that, that popped up near the end of, uh, of, uh, of the legislative uh, calendar towards the end of uh, the end of the fiscal year. And it was an opportunity for the natural gas industry the, uh, the construction trades and the royalty owners, the people that actually, people, your neighbors who actually own the gas to work together to say, hey, this is a backdoor ban. This shouldn't be done in Pennsylvania. And those three groups, and I'm really proud of the relationship, Rob, you did tremendous work on this. We're able to, at least for now, stop the advancement of the legislation. It was a great effort, great partnership. And it shows, if I can keep going, 
what we can do on even bigger issues like economic development if we can work like that together. And, and Rob, before you respond, uh, Dave, when you say wells, just for our listeners, what do you mean by that? Natural gas wells, uh, the, the drilling wells, the, the production. It's the distance between those natural gas wells and other, like I said, natural or man-made features. Like okay. a building. And so having said that, would the current wells that are, uh, are that are already in place, would they be grandfathered in? Uh, you in, know, I couldn't have said it. That was a perfect segue. You know, that's a, that's another feature of what's been proposed here. Well, of course, current wells could be produced, uh, continue producing, but those wells are on pads that can host upwards of a dozen or more, in some cases more than, you know, upwards of two dozen wells. Those pads would be off limits. So meaning companies that invested the work into building the infrastructure to host a bunch of wells will be limited, shut off, no more. And and uh, I just want to continue on the, the what's what you, you, you said a back we we all talked about this on our meetings okay and a, a backdoor way to shut our, our traditional energy down in all of our projects in, in in pennsylvania uh but what's the purpose of this what's the motive behind it has there been any major uh safety uh, issues um with our current uh with our current wells um how how are things operating as we speak Right now, the current setbacks, coupled with what we already described as the most stringent regulations in the country, work hand in glove to protect workers, protect communities, and again, still allow the efficient production, responsible production of this great resource. Okay, uh, Rob, we got a couple minutes. If you would uh, respond, please. Well, Dave's one hundred percent correct. Look, it, it's Dave's right. I when they introduced the legislation. I went up on the hill, I started talking to people, and I said, explain to me why you want to do this. You know, give me a valid reason. And I couldn't get one. All right, so what is it? It's a thinly veiled attempt to shut down our natural gas. And some of the people that I sat with, I said, show me an example in the last eight years of where we have a problem. Give me a driller right now, currently in the industry, that's polluting, that's not following our 2012 regulations. They couldn't. I said, look, why do you want to take the most abundant natural gas in the country that we have here at our feet and shut this down? If you're truly serious about cleaning up the environment, natural gas has to be at the forefront of the conversation. And it has to be at the forefront of the conversation on not just for PA, but where we can send gas to help start cleaning up the environment other places. Now, if we're not going to do that, we're not going to make a difference. If we truly, truly, truly want to make a difference, you take the technology you have today, we know what we can do with it, we agree we're going to enhance that technology, but natural gas has got to be at the forefront of the conversation for electrical generation and the power industry to help cleaning up the environment. And when we have it here and we're not using it, we are doing a disservice to everybody in this Commonwealth and the environment. Right, let's do this, guys. We're going to continue this conversation because there's so much more to it. We have a couple other topics that we're going to hit in the next segment. We're going to have more from the Labor and Energy Show when we come back. Is the best vacation one that you find or one you get lost in? One that takes you to new heights or reminds you to go with the flow? To get your feet wet and your wheels spinning. One that lets you find your own rhythm or get carried away. Find the best of yourself. Get lost in the woods. Plan your stay in the wild woods today. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. 
Do you stream on a Roku, a Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. Watch Action News Live. And the big story on Action News. Plus special programming, breaking news, and severe weather updates. Tremendous amounts of rain. Always on. Always the news team you trust. Watch 6ABC 24-7 on your streaming device. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the uh, Labor and Energy Show here on the Jacob Media Network. We have Rob Baer, who's the president of Pennsylvania State Building Trades, and Dave Callahan, president of the Marcella Shale Coalition. Uh, Before we segue uh, in our conversation, uh, I want to continue our conversation uh, on the setbacks uh, as uh, as we've discussed them. Uh, Very interesting, Rob. You know, you talk, you couldn't get a good answer on what the motive is behind this. There's so many, and and what we've all talked about, and, and Dave said it, um, a backdoor way to shut our, our, you know, our energy production down. And I think I mentioned that, um, you know, the, the advancements we've made over the, you know, you know, o- over the, the years has been largely due in regards to uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions um, has been largely due to natural gas. And so does it make sense uh, for, and, and so having said that, it, and in the practice, in so many different ways, what is the governor's, uh, it, what, what is the governor saying, uh, you know, uh, about this issue? Do we have, have, have we had conversations, Rob? Yeah, I mean, I'm never going to speak for the governor. He's a governor. But I, I, I know in the conversations I've had with him, he understands the needs of why we have to use our natural gas. He, he gets the fact that this is a huge economic driver for Pennsylvania. And he's very cognizant of that fact. You know, one of the things he ran on was economic development, workforce development. The building trades is in lockstep with that, uh, doing economic development and workforce development. You know, it's what we want. It's what we expect. uh, And the governor knows that. I think he's really on board with it. I apologize. I think my camera locked up. I'm not sure why. Uh, but I will tell you, you know, he's committed to this. And, and I got to give a big shout out to Dave and his guys at the Marcella Shale Coalition. You know, one of the things is for the last couple of years, we haven't really been, I guess, saying engaged where we all sit down together. And the other week, you know, I had called Dave. He come in. He sat down with some of our more moderate Dems to discuss some of our issues And they had never had a chance to sit down with Dave and his people because we have a huge turnover in our legislature. Well, all of a sudden, when you're hearing from labor, you're hearing from the industry, you're hearing from the people doing the work, and you take those hot button topic talking points out of the equation, and you're actually sitting with people one-on-one, all of a sudden, you see more of a sense of, you know, if we used a little bit of common sense, this could be good for everybody. You know, and Dave's done a fabulous job, uh, especially in the spring session, of being engaged with us and engaging the legislature to talk about our issues and say, you know, when you when somebody says, let's just increase these setbacks, well, let's have this conversation. Why do you think you need them? Why do you want to shut down our drilling? Why do you want to shut down the landowners from getting the revenue? Why do we want to stop our natural gas? And when you are sitting in a room with people and you see labor and you see the industry and then you see some of our more moderates and all of a sudden people are going, wow, this really, really impacts all of Pennsylvania. And the governor sees that, too. Well, now you get the sense that people are understanding why for the last 10, 12 years we've been pushing so hard to use our natural gas. Dave, you know, there was some legislation before we segue, okay? Um, I think it was uh, SB 650 and HB uh, 1465 uh, from the 2021-2022 PA legislative session. Um, Where are we with legislation right now that is impacting this? Well, that's the setbacks. That's the uh, current legislation is House Bill 170. That was the subject of the discussions that Rob was uh, outlining. And that's something that's uh, still alive out there, even though the committee didn't take up the legislation uh, when it was scheduled to, doesn't mean that it can't take it up later. We'll just have to continue making the case 
for, again, the economic and environmental gains that have been realized from responsible development of natural gas here in Pennsylvania and showing that this is just a backdoor attempt to shut the industry down. You know, I'd like to follow up on something Rob said about the governor and the governor's office. Again, I can't speak for them either, but I would say we're, we're, we're optimistic given what we've heard about his desires to uh, reform the permitting process in Pennsylvania. Permits are slowing down all segments of the economy, not just the, uh, not just the natural gas industry. We have to find a way to show the folks who are applying for various environmental and other permits in the state exactly what you need to satisfy those permits and give the permit applicants a reasonable estimation of how much time it'll take to get those permits across the finish line because time is money, projects require predictability. It's something that we're facing in our competitor states. You know, even though we're in the Appalachian Basin, we've got uh, brothers and sisters doing great work uh, in, in, the, in the production side, transportation side, uh, trade union side in places like Ohio and West Virginia, they're also competitors for capital. So when, when we see a state like Ohio um, bring in massive um, gas-fired, natural gas-fired power generation, and then using the natural gas assets, the electric generation assets powered by natural gas to lure in Intel with that massive investment for a, a chip facility or a lithium battery facility, that's how you use the natural gas resources in your state, not just to satisfy today's needs, but about the advanced economy of tomorrow by promoting those jobs as well. That's what we need to be doing in this state. Perhaps permitting reform will get us there, but it speaks to a larger discussion that Rob already raised about how to treat natural gas on a global scale. And so, uh, you know, obviously we're going to stay on top of this issue. Uh, you know, when it comes to calls to action, we're going to bring welcome back to the broadcast, Rob. Um, so let's let's let's. Uh, and I don't know if you were privy to that conversation, but yep. you know, we're gonna we're gonna keep people updated on this incredibly important issue. Uh, let's segue uh, right now to uh, something called LNG, liquefied natural gas. Uh, we're talking about a, an LNG export facility here in Philly. Um, I'd like to set the table for our listeners, Dave. If if, if, if you would um, tell our listeners who you know may not be completely aware, what is LNG? Uh, LNG is liquefied natural gas. That's how you transport natural gas. You liquefy it, uh, put it on special tankers to travel across the water. LNG can be used in other ways as well, but that's the primary way. And so we have the ability to make this natural gas that we ship via pipeline in this country incredibly mobile to reach other parts of the world, other parts who are desperate for a reliable, clean source of natural gas. You know, I mentioned the fact that we have among the lowest methane intensity in the entire world. You know, you look at Europe, is trying to wean itself off of Russian natural gas. Our gas here, at least in, in, the, in the Appalachian region, is up to 65% cleaner than the natural gas they were getting from Russia. We've seen European countries um, expedite permitting processes to put together to enhance their ability to import natural gas from America and elsewhere. We need to put that same kind of energy into our export facilities. And we have an opportunity, perhaps, in the Philadelphia area uh, a, a, a quicker way, a more direct way to ship natural gas from Appalachia overseas. It makes a lot of sense to develop something there. We know it's something that, uh, that the building trades are in support of. Great jobs associated with it, not just in the construction phase, but in, in the operation and maintenance of those facilities, but just a better outlet for more Appalachian gas. And, and we're talking about the, the benefits of the facility being in the Philly location in a geographical sense, okay? If we had an LNG export facility now, uh, you know, they, they, you talk about the situation in the Ukraine, um, uh, you know, uh, globally and of course regionally, talk about the benefits there, Dave, um, if we had one up and running right now. Again, for the world, Rob already really stated it well about the environmental benefits. There, there are, every corner of this world could benefit from clean American natural gas. 
not just environmentally, but also from a national security standpoint and having a reliable partner. You know, there's also another factor involved as well. That is what we call energy poverty. Anywhere from two to three billion people, that billion with a B, are, uh, don't have access to energy or their access to energy is not very secure or it's not very clean. Because natural gas is transportable in this fashion as liquefied natural gas, we can reach those countries and those people who are, who are literally scrambling to survive. We can give them a leg up both economically and environmentally. Rob, if you will. Oh, Dave's 100% correct. Look, there's, a, there's people all over this world that are desperate, desperate for power. And we want to be the ones to help them. We want to take and give a worldwide market to our drillers to export our gas. And we want to have an impact on the globe. We want to generate clean power. We want to lift people up out of poverty. We want to give them access to being able to have a well pump and have clean water, build sanitary sewer systems. The possibilities are limitless if we would just take the step back and say, here's what we have, here's how we can use it, and here's how we can ship it. And if, you know, we were serious about this and we looked at things on the macro level, and instead of looking at this little microcosm of saying, what can I do right now? But what can I do over 5, 10, 15, 20 years? And then look at the impact on the human race. Look at the impact on the environment. Look at the impact on the globe. Pennsylvania's positioned to be a driver of that. And I keep singing these praises to every single politician that I talk to, saying, look, for 50 to 80 years, we didn't have a targeted energy policy in this country. We didn't have our pollution controls. You know, we all talk about the 90s when we were running around the country building scrubbers and precipitators and bag houses, and that was great. But then we kind of stopped. Well, we all say we need to learn from our mistakes, and we did. So we started cleaning up the industry. We started putting implementation, implementation of harder restrictions on our drillers. And they accepted it. We started producing gas efficiently, cleanly, safely, bringing it out of the ground. We started converting some of our coal-fired plants in this country already to cleaner burning natural gas. Now, are you always going to have CO2 emissions when you burn something? Yes. But you heard Dave say, look what we did and brought our emission levels down. Imagine if we were doing that around the world. Well, that's an interesting point, Rob, because it's amazing when you say that. And, and the reason it matters is we're shutting our, and, and for the listeners, we're willing to shut ourselves down. And you, li you listen to the efficiency that we, that, that we have in, in, in our, 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 uh, in our producers. Okay. How we've made great advancements, how we've reduced greenhouse gas emissions, uh, you know, at, at a leadership pace, Compared to the rest of the world, we're willing to shut ourselves down. By the way, the environment just doesn't hang over the U.S. And so at the end of the day, we're willing to shut ourselves down and let other people who are doing it way less efficiently do it and then import those those products, the same ones we shut down. Let's talk about some of the, the coalitions and the task forces when it comes to the Philadelphia, um, you know, the, the ex, LNG export terminal. I think there's the Page Coalition, okay, uh, and then there's the Philadelphia LNG Export Task Force, um, and I know Labor's heavily involved in those. Rob, talk about those committees and, and why they're so important and, and, and what we're up against. Well, first I'm going to give a shout out to my good friend from the Southeast, Jimmy Snell, from the steam fitters down there, who's done a tremendous job spearheading this effort. Absolutely. Uh, Look, these committees are so important because you have to get the message to our politicians, federally and state level, of why this is important and what these projects bring to bear, not just for Pennsylvania economy, but for a global economy. And we're always going to have people that are going to be against progress. All right. To build that facility, do we need to extend a couple pipelines? Yes, we do. 
All right, I have to have them to put the gas into the facility when we build it so we can liquefy it and export it. And we can do them safely, but we have to get out of this mode of we're against all progress. And we have to have our coalition sitting down with our politicians saying, look, when you engage with the trades and you engage with the industry and we're coming to you with commitments that we can build it safely, we can put our pipelines in safely, we can run this facility safely, and we're going to hire the people from the community to run this facility. And we're going to create a ton of good permanent jobs. And we're going to have a huge tax base now for Pennsylvania because all our drillers are going to be sending their gas down there. They're going to be paying their taxes on it. That facility is going to be paying its taxes. Those workers are going to be paying their taxes. And all of a sudden, building one export facility with our coalitions, we can show that we've not just impacted Chester, Philly, Pennsylvania, but now we've impacted Europe, Eastern and Western. We've created an economic stream for this Commonwealth to continue on. You know, one of the things we always talk about here and we argue all the time and I do it is these impact fees. All right. Well, you read that last year was some of our highest fees ever because of our production. Now, when gas is down and we're not drilling and we're not producing because we don't have this market, what happens? Our fee collection goes down. You know how to make sure that revenue streams up? Build an LNG facility, give our drillers that market. Then every community in Pennsylvania that gets money from those impact fees is going to see an increase in revenue. Imagine what it would do for your fire, your police, all your departments that you're funding out of this. And all we're doing is taking the gas we have and sending it to people that truly need it. It's a win, win, win. And when these coalitions sit down with our politicians and they show check, 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 check. I, my assistant here, my partner at the building trades, Mike Forge likes to say, people hate getting beaten up with facts. Well, when you actually lay the facts out in front of them, it's very hard to deny that this is a win for everyone, it you is. know? And, and along those lines for everyone, just a minor point to make, but an important one, uh, we have more than enough gas to meet our own needs here at home and share resources with the world as well. And to Rob's point about an LNG facility, that's, that's just one piece of the puzzle of infrastructure. Yep. We need infrastructure in this country, uh, especially on the natural gas side. You know, we saw production last year, 2022, dip ever so slightly, but dip for the first time ever, ever in the history of the Marcellus and Yucca shales. Um, and that's primarily due to a lack of infrastructure. You know, there have been countless pipelines proposed to take product north, take product east, in the case of the uh, Mountain Valley Pipeline, MVP, take it south, that have either been caught in regulatory limbo or just canceled out of sheer frustration. We need clear-cut uh, regulatory standards so that we know, the pipeline developers know, what's required to get pipeline in the ground to serve markets here, to serve markets up in New England, serve markets in New York State and overseas. It's infrastructure, and we all know uh, from labor and energy cooperation with infrastructure comes great opportunities for jobs for the trades. The, the work is done at the highest quality of level, the highest reliable level, and, and the safest way as well. And so that partnership on infrastructure can take us very far. Gentlemen, um, we're down to the nitty gritty. We're not going to uh, get to the, uh, to the topic of the Mountain Valley Pipeline. But it, uh, along the lines of what we're talking about right now, I'm talking about, you know, and because there's so much there, I want to, you know, we're definitely going to, you know, get back, you know, uh, to this topic, permanent reform and all those things that stand in the way, um, or, you know, that are needed, uh, you know, for progress. Um, and, and, and so, but the conversation was fantastic. Rob Bear, President, Pennsylvania Building Trades, Dave Callahan, President, Marcella Shale Coalition. Thank you so much for being our guest. Can't wait to do it again and to educate the people on common sense and energy. It's not a union issue. It shouldn't be a political issue. It's a human issue. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being on the program. 
Thanks, Jay Doc. Thank you. Great being with you. You got it. We'll have more from the Labor and Energy Show in just a minute. Is the best vacation one that you find or one you get lost in? One that takes you to new heights or reminds you to go with the flow? To get your feet wet and your wheels spinning? One that lets you find your own rhythm or get carried away? Find the best of yourself. Get lost in the woods. Plan your stay in the wild woods today. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. Do you stream on a Roku, a Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. Watch Action News Live. And the big story on Action News. Plus special programming, breaking news, and severe weather updates. Tremendous amounts of rain. Always on. Always the news team you trust. Watch 6ABC 24-7 on your streaming device. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. And welcome back, everyone, to the Labor and Energy Show with J. Doc and Krause. As we wrap things up here on this edition of the Labor and Energy Show, boy, J. Doc, terrific conversation uh, with Dave Callahan and also Rob Bear. Um, I want to encourage our listening audience and the viewers to uh, download the podcast of this broadcast and re- and and listen to it, and don't be afraid to replay and listen. Uh, Because there were so many individual points that were made with clarity. Really, really good stuff with you today. Well, you heard uh, the saying from the horse's mouth, right? Okay. Um, You know, at the the top of the the pyramid stands uh, Rob Bear for Labor and PA and, of course, Dave Callahan, uh, you know, for the Marcella Shale Coalition. Um, And there are so many common sense points. I mean, you know, these guys are incredibly passionate. And like they said at the beginning of the broadcast, labor, energy, and the environment, okay? Uh, They all go hand in hand. We all care about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the environment, and we we need to take a common sense approach in, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. providing energy for our, our, our citizens and at the same time prioritizing the environment. One of the things about this show, Joe, is that, um, it, it, it shows the commitment there from our leaders at the top to, to accomplish it. And the fact that, you know, a lot of these backdoor policies, you know, they're set, you know, the, the setback distances um, and, you know, the, 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 the lack of, inter, you know, the lack of support for pipelines when needed. OK, only to shut it down and, and have to import the same products for people who are doing it way less efficiently and environmentally efficiently is the fact that, you um, you know, we have people willing to, uh, you know, fight for the citizens themselves, even though many people don't know what's in their best interest. So definitely an encouraging conversation. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, we're leaders in America. And, and, and when it comes to our natural resources, uh, Pennsylvania, that's why this is conversation is not just for Pennsylvania. It's for the entire nation. OK, and so just a great show, Joe. Yeah, no doubt about that. You know, I always consume the content on this program as a listener, as a viewer. And I often wonder to myself when I'm listening to Rob Bear or listening to Dave Callahan today. um, And I know Rob had mentioned Jim Snell, listening to Jimmy Snell on our first uh, show um, that debuted out in Pittsburgh. I always ask myself the question, geez, I wonder why the what what appears to be so obvious to me and to. I think a lot of our listeners, what appears to be so obvious seems to not be the case when it comes to either politicians or decision makers that can't seem to get out of their own way on some of this stuff. You know, listen, um, it's the lack of education. Okay, understanding the entire, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the forensic, taking a forensic approach to understanding a holistic approach um, to understanding all facets. 
So that's why we're here, Joe. I mean, I, I sure hope that we're we're filling the void and that, and that, you know, listen, we care about the environment to the end of the earth, man, which is hopefully is trillions and trillions of years away. We're, and, and, and we have so many great people here doing what it takes to maintain our energy resources. Uh, by the way, Rob, one of the things Rob Bear didn't talk about is the solutions we're coming up with, coming up with, with when it comes to the environmental, um, you know, and, and working with the, uh, the environmental sector. OK. And, and, and the fact that we're working together to, to, to create renewable jobs and doing all those things together, we can make it happen, Joe. Good stuff. That's going to do it for this edition of the Labor and Energy Show with J. Doc and Krause. Again, special thanks to our guest today, Dave Callahan, President Marcellus Shale Coalition, and of course, Rob Bear from the Pennsylvania Building Trades, again, providing some good in-depth detail uh, with J. Doc on this edition of the Labor and Energy Show. On behalf of all of our viewers, on behalf of all of our listeners, and on behalf of all of the politicians that will consume this content, I'm Joe Krause. See you next time, everybody. Is the best vacation one that you find or one you get lost in? One that takes you to new heights or reminds you to go with the flow? To get your feet wet and your wheels spinning? One that lets you find your own rhythm or get carried away? Find the best of yourself. Get lost in the woods. Plan your stay in the Wildwoods today. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. Do you stream on a Roku, a Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. Watch Action News Live. And the big story on Action News. Plus special programming, breaking news, and severe weather updates. Tremendous amounts of rain. Always on. Always the news team you trust. Watch 6ABC 24-7 on your streaming device. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today.